poverty is stalking the land. Wherever joblessness exists, a hopeless situation is there. And so, it is to the credit of the organizers of this conference that you not only hear theories and big presentations, that you hear from the horse's mouth, as they say, those affected. And they have come from Rosal, from Skeldon, from Wales, from LBI, and more to tell their stories. We have had four presentations earlier today, and we have had the presentations from these colleagues. And I now invite the media to ask questions on the presentations which have been made thus far. The Ministry of Agriculture is responsible for the three remaining estates. Those estates, government has said, is their way forward. Yet we see no representative here. Why? Unfortunately, the minister expressed to our union that he couldn't attend. And let me also be frank, the minister wasn't invited to do a presentation because he told me that he has no status in the sugar industry when we picketed him once with the Wales workers. Hundreds of Wales workers picketed him and he called me on the phone while I was outside with the picketers. And he said to me, why am I am picketing him? Why do, don't I go to the Ministry of Finance? Because the industry has been passed over to NISIM. Legally, the entire sugar industry is in the hands of NISIM. But here we have the government tinkering and dancing about the place, telling us about the Minister of Agriculture and it was raised issues with the Minister of Agriculture. It's to show you the contempt and the ridiculous attitude they have to the workers and the industry. So, one, the minister warned me, don't approach him on matter. Prior to that, he never had any respect for the workers. When we raised questions to him, he said we must go to Hanuman and Paul Bin, and they're going to deal with our questions. He said these are questions that has to do with policy position and decision that you are making not in the interest of the union and the workers and the stakeholders. Nevertheless, he never, never met with us. This is the important point I want to make. So it's not that we didn't want the minister to be here. He should have been the main, one of the main persons here. But he doesn't want to come, he doesn't want to face the people. He never went and faced the workers. One time the president said he will answer the letters that we have written to the president. He never answered the letter that we had written to the president, and the president referred those letters to him. And then we wrote back to the president, and we have not answered even from the president finally. I want to, I'm impressed upon these small men and women, what they have said. I move because um, I understand what it is to lose a job. You know, I lost my job some years ago for inciting that caused a company operation to be closed. So I know what it is to lose a job. But well, let me say that I'm moved up by what you guys are saying. What I want to understand today when we ask all these questions and we do all these things, what is the way forward to deal with this matter? I listened to Mr. John Yu, who spoke with us and remained, and Mr. Harmon, who talked to us and left. How can we take the ideas that flow here this morning? to move this industry 
beyond where it is. When you have there, you have sugar too big to fail. I've heard Mr. Amon with that too. Sugar too big to fail. But this is an industry. You know, the, our, our mistake is that a message we send in about sugar and that sugar keep industry. All the things that we were talking about in the past, ethanol, we have molasses we making, but we are concentrating on things. What we concentrate on is sugar, European market, world market. I would like to, for the organizers, to begin to look by the time this afternoon when we leave here, what are we going to be doing to sustain the sugarcane industry that it can make the type of contribution to the development of the society? An important point is missing, and Mr. Jagmeo made a point this morning. The question of the impact analysis when it comes to how decisions impact on the community and the people. We can't lose sight of it. If we had listened, if we had, if we had listened and take into consideration a number of things, the things that we are hearing here today from these guys, we would not be hearing them. Life would have been better. We first of all, we need to forget that it is man who make the industry and not the industry who make the man. Come on, we got to change this thing. If we got old hands and we got crusade to make this thing better. Sugar, cane, industry must survive and contribute to our development. Thank you. We are happy that the General Secretary of the TUC has spent the session with us and will continue for the day and we'll continue hopefully hear from him. I've seen an indication that the President of FETUB and it is good to see these gentlemen together because in labor we will all have to work together to forge the interests of the workers. So I give Brother Carville Duncan the opportunity to ask his question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Protocol has been observed. Now, I have listened attentively to all the presentation, and I am reminded, going to many conferences, that there was a series of presentation, very good presentation, but at the dawn of conference, the presentation died with it. The question arises, what are we going to do? What plans are we, do we have in place? And what mechanisms we got to put in place to ensure that the thoughts expressed by these people the purpose of this conference is known and recorded. My simple view is this. At the dawn of this conference, we need to come out with a resolution. And embodied in that resolution ought to be that the persons who are retrenched should be the first to be employed as a basic thing principle and the second thing should be is that those persons who Gaisuko is indebted to a time frame should be put in place for them to be paid at least having come out to this conference with those thoughts and it is published tomorrow then the nation will realize that what we had here today was that only a talking shop 
it was a sharp a, a, a meeting for action and we have taken action and before i sit mr chairman i think we ought to consider something about the teachers the teacher's struggle is a just one we you talked about it this morning they have went through the full garment of the procedures but today they are still on strike i heard the lead of the opposition said on more than one occasion that there is money to pay the teachers are we going to ask the teachers who mold our nation that they should get five thousand dollars increase in salary that is what it means so this conference of trade unionists ought to come out and let everybody understand that they are in support of the teachers and the struggle of the teachers is the struggle of all trade unionists and all workers and once we do those two things mr chairman then we can easily relax in our quiet domain and say the conference has been a success it has done something well thank you this has been an incredible pleasure for me and the most important part of today obviously was listening to the presentations because that's what it's all about you're right by the way the meeting will be just a bunch of talking heads if you don't come up with the action plan because you can't have a bunch of trade unionists politicians activists in a room recognizing the situation that is before us today and not leave with an action plan that says this is what we are going to do because i will argue this is all about choices everything is about choices you listen to two different visions i listen to Barack, i listen to mr Harmon. two different visions so life is about choices we have choices as workers choices as Guyanese choices as to the course of direction we expect our elected politicians to take. And I will argue that if you look at nations around the world, people are all having these discussions. Because in Guyana, we might be having the discussion about sugar, but in other nations around the world, they decide what industries are so important that they subsidize. So I listened to the argument from Mr. Harmon. To Mr. Harmon, this was strictly an economic debate. It was about the profitability of the companies. They did not once talk about the economic impact of thousands of workers not having a job would have on the economy. Because if the company loses this much money a year, but this much is taken out of the economy, it's common sense as to what the government has to do. So we're in trade negotiations, and we've got the United States pushing Canada very hard right now on our supply management system, dairy, poultry, challenges within the agricultural sector. Yet the United States subsidizes their agricultural sector about $20 billion a year. Take a look at what the United States does when it comes to their sugar industry. And the prices in the United States, what, look, it's all about choices. All about choices. The United States values their oil industry, $22 billion a year they subsidize it. Canada, I can start to walk through the different industries. I'm an aerospace worker. I'm a sheet metal worker. My job was on the shop floor. I'm clock number 28091. I'm a blue collar worker. The Canadian government heavily subsidizes the aerospace industry. Why? Because it's high check, well paying jobs. So governments take a look at, the, at, the, at their industries and say, these are the industries that are going to be the backbone for jobs in our country. So if you're a country that's rich in natural resources and raw materials, you would think that the government strategy would be how to use that to betterment of the men and women of the nation. So this is the discussion. The discussion is how can a government walk away from the number one industry in Guyana. Close all kinds of estates, recognizing the incredible impact that it's gonna have on communities, on children. So this is where it's all about politics, I will argue. 
because politics are choices and we all have choices so it has to be how are we going to fight back how are we going to let the politicians know that they better fix this or there's going to be a political price to pay you're right there has to be a statement right off the bat that says the workers need their severance and they bloody well better get it now so this is about pushing coming up with a bold aggressive statement and then fighting walking the streets taking the workers in the community down to the white house it's about continuing what i know you've already started the greenhouse now the greenhouse now there you go <laughs> <laughs> anyway listen i just i, I just sit there and i listen to you and when we went through a, a lot of the restructuring of so many industries in canada during the 0809 recession I negotiated a lot of contracts in workplaces that closed. It was the first time in my life seeing women and men crying at the bargaining table because they lived in a community that there was so little industry and they knew there was going to be challenges to get jobs. 59-year-old men, 60-year-old men, women trying to figure out where they're going to go to work. So we are at a crossroads here and there's two paths. And I would not take the path of least resistance. As a matter of fact, I'll take the path of both resistance. Thank you very much. I don't have a question, but uh, a presentation or an presentation. Some clarity to, to what was said at the conference. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Raymond Hanif. I was a sugar worker, and I, was, I am one of 7,000 people or workers who are safe work. And I would just like to, to, to add some clarity to what is consultation, consultation that the government said they had starting in 2015. I have spent 21 years at Alvin Estate, spent five years at Rosal Estate, and my last three and a half years at Wheels at East Demar Estate. We were told in 2015 that we are amalgamating consolidating LBI and then more for efficiency purposes. This is what we were told. So what we did, we bullied them. And I like to use the word bullied. We bullied the workers to come on board to join with us to consolidate the two estates, the two units. LBI and Rosa and, 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 and more. We moved across to more. We spent a whole host of money, $20 million on a brand new spanking building. Believe you me, and we transfer the staff from LBI to more. And within a few months, we were there in December, in July, the news came. It came in pieces, bits and pieces, starting with some white paper prepared by the state. Green. Well, we know it was white paper, that, that's what they told us. That they're going to close their states. We, up to today, up to today, comrades, believe you me, we have never ever met anyone in government including the minister, I myself asked personally for us to meet with the Minister of Agriculture, even at him, the PS, the Permanent Secretary, to understand what are, where are we going forward with the sugar industry. Until today, until today, we have never ever had any meeting, and the minister was saying just without respect to him, there were consultations. Consult who? This are the sugar workers, those 7,000 persons were never ever come to a room, never ever come to a room and say, you know what, this are the future of the sugar industry. We are going to close you down. Uh, um, the point of severance pay, I'm not interested in severance pay. Mr. Lincoln Lewis made the point. What will be the future of our employees? And I will take a nap, a, 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 a nap of the private sector. After the industry were closed, the private sector, what they did? They went to Enmore, they went to Skelland, they went to, to, to Wales, creating current marketing. Where were these private sectors when the estate was about to close and before it was closed? Where were these people? After the closure, a set of ministers ran down to Enmore. They ran down to Enmore, bringing what? Good news? What good news? You are taking our friend. What can you tell me now after you close the estate? And then you hear the one minister said, guys, super workers will be forced to be employed. The young man just mentioned, coming out from school, sent down so much applications, can't find a job, can't find a job. Where are the, 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 the plans for our show workers? As a show worker, I can book a flight to Florida this country tomorrow, but I'm taking this struggle. I'm standing here. This is my first public speech 
my first public presentation and thanks to Gao for inviting me here to be here this morning. And I will not stop because now me. It's not about the politicians, it's about those, those ordinary people that are sitting over there who have five and six children. Yeah. I sat in my office interviewing, going through, and this is not a lie, you know, these are facts. I have all the means of these meetings. I have all the facts. So I talk about what happened in the estate, Dr. Rebhanif. Being there, went through the entire process of disclosure of these estates. I sat and sit this to 1,700 plus employees, sugar workers, asking them, they will tell you, Mr. Hanif, I have worked at the NMORE estate for 30 years. Are you telling me, come 29th of December, I'm not going back to the other line? With tears coming down your eyes, you know, people who are 59 and 60 years old, as Mr. Robinson, I know him well, I work with him at Rosal. I work with Mr. Grant at Rosal. These are our comrades. We know the pain that they're feeling. Not the politicians, not the, the, the decision makers. They were not sitting there to see those tears. But they closed the estate. I have no problem. Minister Arman said they came from the industry with $82 million. Some, some of us can't spell it to $82 billion. Why am I interested in $82 billion, comrades? Why? They didn't deal with $82 million. We didn't put the industry in $82 million. I've always said, and I continue saying, we were never ever bad employees. We were never ever bad managers. We were badly managed. Put that anybody your step. We were badly managed. And I'm saying that what has happened to the sugar industry, what has happened to those 7,000 sugar workers, it's sad, it's unfortunate. And the biggest problem here, as I'm standing here this morning, there is not a single, you know what they did? One week before Christmas in 2017, last year, one week before Christmas, somebody said cooking class, sewing class at Rosal. Five days, five days. We copied the sewing class who said that is, what the word they use? Uh, I'm creating jobs for, for, for the workers. How can you train somebody in five days to learn to cook and sew? I mean, come on. We had, we had the diploma courses on since in April. Then you probably saw my Kenan Gawa in a conference today. Last week, Friday or Thursday, they had the, 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 the graduation ceremony. Graduating plumbers. How many of those, those guys can go and get a plumbing job? So I'm saying, look, I have no personal acts to go with anybody, but I'm just saying that the decision makers, when they closed the estate, did not, did not, believe me, consult the workers, understanding the feelings of these workers. You ask a man at 49, 50, 60, where can you find a job? Let me know what's going on. The guy was making a point. Um, um, that comment here. Take chance. He is 59, he will have pension come, come, come at 60. He will not make the best three, of, best three of his last five years in terms of contribution to NIS. And you know the worrying thing, and I'm gonna leave this for this conference. The worrying thing that we are in this state now, people are fooling the Guyanese people. When you read all those blogs in Startup News and Kaitra News, people who know nothing, absolutely nothing about sugar, see the comments that they are making. They are not feeling the pain, you know. They are not feeling the pain. They mock us, they laugh at us, and they believe that we as sugar workers cause the industry to be where it is. I am saying the sugar industry is not a bad industry. SPU, I have no problem with SPU. They came on board, they are doing what they have to do. But the sugar industry has tremendous potential. And we have given one opportunity, as the comrade said, give, we were prepared to give this, give this, this, this industry. He said one, one day, we were as, as seniors, one week of our salary, to let us get on our footing again. But we were never ever, believe you me, never ever consulted. So when the minister was saying about consultation, consult who? The, as he said, he came into, uh, in, in, into, into power, and they prepared to do what they did. They prepared to do what they did, and to close it down. And my last thing, not because they are red, I'm not a PPP, PPP member here. This is my passion for the sugar industry and my fellow sugar workers. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, it's not a question, Mr. Chairman, but I will use this as my starting point to continue championing the unjustification that was done to us, because I'm one of them. You know what, what was bothering I, I'm smiling at this part. When you're doing a severance and telling these workers, you know, come December 29th, you have to go off. Authoritatively, with that tremendous power, you can go to God who they can help you. And you know what? On the 20th, on the 20th of December, January, I was called. I need to share this. I was called and there was an info given to me. It's your time, boy. I said, what? <laughs> and you can imagine the feeling and, and, and Grant was saying just now. I couldn't believe my day was now, you know. 
because we were promising in the to see the process continue to ensure that our workers who laid off will go through that phase of guiding them through the process. We were kicked aside too. We were kicked aside. And the other was told, when they asked why me, SPU said you must go. It's a record, I taped that piece of conversation. SPU said I must go. I, I'm, I'm here, I'm still living, and you are still living. And by the grace of God, all those 7,000 sugar workers, believe me, will make it somehow. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Gahu, thank you.